subdiv, subsurf, subdivision, and subdivision surface, all the same name for the subdivision surface modifier, the fastest and easiest way to give yourself more geometry. And that's what we're going to be going over today. So when you click on this modifier, it defaults to Catmull Clark level one viewport divisions, level two optimal display. What does all this stuff mean? Well, let's go over these one by one. Catmull Clark versus Simple is just telling Blender how to create this extra geometry, all these extra vertices. In Catmull Clark, it's actually rounding everything out a little bit, kind of averaging the positions of everything. So if you actually create a whole bunch of divisions, it basically turns this cube into a sphere. But if you were to take Simple, what it's actually doing is just creating these vertices and just looking at the edge placement of everything. So that if you were to actually say, apply this and then come over to our view mode like this, or just go into edit mode like that, you can actually see where everything thing is, all the new vertices that we've created there, whereas if you were to do it with Catmull Clark and apply that, then when you head over to tab mode, it's actually rounded everything out a little bit like that. As far as levels viewport versus render, that's just describing what you'll be seeing within the viewport, like right here versus the render tab. So if we have it set to one or higher, you can see how it's actually changing what we're seeing here. But if we were to up the render, nothing's actually happening. We're moving that around not until we say render it. So let's go ahead and render out something like that. And now it looks like a sphere because our render is set to six, even though our levels viewport is set to one. And that's why it looks so blocky right there. Optimal display doesn't really seem to do anything here in the solid view, but when you go on over to wireframe view like this, you can actually see how it's switching between these two things like this. And what that's actually doing is toggling whether or not it's going to display these extra edges that have been created by your levels viewport like this. So as we bump it up like that, you can see how it's adding in all these extra edges and everything. But if we were to toggle on optimal display, it's just showing as though the original vertices were there where all the lines intersect. So you're just showing the edges that were connecting where the original vertices were rather than all the additional edges that were created from your new vertices from your subdivision surface. All right, so before we get into the advanced section, I just wanna let you know that you're not really going to need to do anything with these settings in here most of the time. Big asterisk right there. You might need to do something if there is you know, some sort of weird glitchiness or anything like that, but 90% of the time, you're not gonna to need to touch these settings. So use limit surface. You can you know, read the description here and see what it's doing in concept. It's placing vertices at the surface that would be produced at the infinite levels of subdivision, AKA the smoothest possible shape. What does that actually mean? Well, let's look at horizontal view here and I'm just gonna kind of draw a basic diagram. Imagine you have three vertices, one, two, and three. Our original mesh looks something like this. When you place a subdivision surface modifier on there, you know, let's say if you have a level one on there, it'll create a vertex, a vertex, a vertex, and a vertex, something like that. It'll add additional vertices at these points like this. And each time you add in vertices, it's going to get a little bit more rounded. So it's gonna kind of start doing that and then eventually just turn into a kind of a smooth shape, kind of like when we have this cube here as we add in more points, it eventually just turns into a sphere more or less. So what the use limit surface does is it kind of extrapolates outwards to say, well, what if we actually just did an infinite level division right here. So it maxes out at six by default, but you know, let's do a little bit of calculus and find out what if we did, you know, a 10 quadrillion viewport right here. And what that'll do is that it'll take all of our vertices right here. And then when it is calculating where to place our additional vertices, it'll just say, well, if we have an infinite subdivision, you know, it'll be this curved surface, perfectly curved surface right there. And we'll just try and place our vertices close to that line. So when we did it before, you know, our thing looks something like here, 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 and there with vertices here and here. Well, it's gonna kind of just flatten these out and move these vertices onto this line like that. So then when we actually add it in, it's still these straight lines rather than curved lines, but they actually sit on our theoretical curved line right there. I don't know if that explanation was any good whatsoever, but that's kind of the best way I can explain that. So if we actually toggle it back and forth, you know, when we're looking at six level subdivision, you can't really see any difference whatsoever. And that's because when we get to six, we're kind of already at that basically infinite division right there. So when it's calculating the difference between an infinitely divided surface and a level six divided surface, there's not a whole lot of difference. When you actually start to see a bigger difference is when you look at it in lower subdivision like this. If we have a subdivision surface of two, then when we toggle back and forth between the two, you can see how it's actually changing it a little bit and it's making it 
a little bit smoother. If we look at it on one, especially is when you can actually start to see things a little bit. If we look at it without the limit surface turned on, it's very pointy, you know, all of our things here go pshoo and pshoo like that. When we turn on this, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit rounder. Now we can move on to quality, which is basically kind of what it sounds like. It's taking that, you know, curve that we've created, that infinitely divided curve, and how accurately do we want to calculate that? Because obviously, you know, Blender's not going to do an infinite number of calculations to see how smooth it would be. Because at that point, you may as well just have set your viewport to an infinite number. So quality is basically kind of taking that approximation that Blender is doing and saying, how accurate do you want that approximation to be? And as we kind of, you know, move it up and down, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a change, really subtle change, not a whole lot, especially it's kind of focusing around this part where our original vertex was on our base mesh. And as we move it around, you can see how the points around it are kind of conforming more to that ideal spherical shape that we're kind of imagining that this would become. The important thing to note here is that it is, you know, there's a limit to how accurate this thing can get or how much you can perceptibly see when you turn up the quality. So like going between four and five, you know, I can't see any difference between the two. Maybe you can. Uh, and then obviously going up to six has no effect whatsoever. And then bumping it down a little bit does have a little bit more effect. Going from one to two, you can see that difference quite a bit. The default of three is generally, you know, a pretty good value. You don't need to go any higher than that. And I haven't really noticed a whole lot of performance difference going between these different levels, but I'm sure there is some. So if you're absolutely trying to get every ounce of performance out of the scene you have, maybe turn down the quality a little bit if you can afford it. and you can tell the difference. Looking at two of these side by side, I would not be able to objectively tell you which one is a higher quality than another. On more complex meshes, you know, you may be able to tell, so take that with a grain of salt. Now, an important thing that you can use with the subdivision surface modifier that isn't really actually a part of the modifier itself is the crease weight. So if we go on over to edit mode for our cube, select like this edge right here, for example, and then you can press in on your keyboard to bring up this side panel. And then if we look at this crease weight right here, what that's basically doing is telling Blender how hard we want there to be a crease right here. You can see when we turn it all the way up to one, this is just a straight edge. It's not really rounding this out at all. This original edge from our mesh, this edge that we're creating right here is not being rounded when it's set to one. And you can do different combinations of that as well. So like bring this up to here. And now we have this really interesting rounded shape like that. And you can also, you know, obviously do partial values and that can just help you with like, say, not making things so rounded out if you didn't want it to be a perfect sphere. So let's actually take our creases all the way back down to zero and then maybe bump it up a little bit. And now you can see we have something that's a little bit less rounded. You can still see that it's more of a cube, even when we bump up our resolution a whole bunch, it's obviously still a cube rather than if we had taken this all the way down and now it's just a sphere. And the quality does have an effect on this somewhat as well. Again, not a huge effect most of the time. So let's bump these up to, I don't know, 0.99. It's gonna make it a little bit rounded. And then if we bump our quality up and down, you can see how it is actually changing it quite a bit going from one to two, it bumps that up quite a bit. Then going from two to three, a big difference. And then obviously as we're going through maximum quality here, gives you maximum results. And this is one situation where you might actually be able to see quite a bit of a difference between a five and a six. You know, as we're going up like that, it's obviously quite a bit better. And let's just bump this down, see what it looks like with a slightly lower, like mean crease of 0.5. And mean crease versus crease right here, it just, that's depending on whether or not you have multiple edges selected. So if we just have one edge, it's crease. If we have two edges, it's mean crease. And changing between five and six, you know, when it's set to 0.5, you can't really tell a difference at all. So the higher your crease weight is set, the more likely you are to see an effect here. Bump that up to 0.9. And there you go, you can see a little bit of an effect, but if we go any lower than that, you know, 0.7, whatever. And as this gets lower, this can go a little bit lower and still not be able to see an effect. Anyways, long-winded way of explaining all that stuff. Let's move on to UV Smooth. So what UV Smooth does is it's kind of smoothing, it's kind of what it sounds like, it smooths out your UV map. So let's go on over to our shading tab. 
Here we are with our material. Let's add in an image texture. Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on to bring up all this stuff right here, and it's connected to the UV map. So let's go to our image texture, open, head on over to our Blender textures file, and I don't know, let's choose marble. Let's add in our color map for our marble right here and connect that to our principled BSDF. Wait for the shaders to compile, and now you can see that we have a sphere, sort of, with a marble texture added to it. And obviously there's still a crease in here because this is not a properly spherically UV unwrapped cube right here. But if we head back on over to the layout tab and we can actually start playing with this little bit and see how that affects what's going on. All right, so now we have our UV smooth set to none. And what that's doing is it's really taking no smoothing of our UV map. So I think the easiest way to actually illustrate this is to actually look at our mean crease right here. And as I'm kind of stretching this around, you can see how the UV map is responding to kind of the deformations of the cube itself. You know, as it's one, it's a perfect cube and everything is perfectly flat. As we bring it down a little bit, you can see how it's starting to collapse it. And it's a really, really subtle effect. Let's be honest, like, you know, at least in this situation, you're not really gonna see it a whole lot. You know, look at this little dark spot right here in the corner where the corner was. As we kind of move, you can see how it's kind of like twisting a little bit for lack of a better term. And if we put it on, you know, none, it's not really twisting. It's just kind of staying flat with it. And each of these levels right here, each kind of as you go down this list, I believe it's like kind of getting more accurate for, you know, as if it was really an actual sphere. We just bump it up all the way to all. And then you can see how it's basically a sphere. Bump up our resolution right there. And I mean, look at it, it's basically a sphere. If we set this to none, it kind of changes the look. It's another one of those things, you know, if you take two of them side by side, if we, you know, duplicate it. In fact, let's just duplicate this thing, bring it along the Y axis, set this one to all of them. And, you know, looking at it, you can kind of see a little bit of a difference, like right here on this edge, you can see where there's definitely an edge out here before and not so much seeing it here. You can see it right here where there is this edge, not over here, I don't know. Again, really subtle. I, you wouldn't, you don't, you don't need to change it. Just don't change it unless you have a really specific reason to change it. Now, boundary smooth. This does very little. I cannot tell what it's doing. You know, if you change it back and forth, I can't really tell any difference. UV map mode, edit mode. There's nothing that I can do to kind of make it have any sort of effect on it. I don't know if it's just because it's a broken feature or maybe I just don't know how to use it. So, you know, if it's, if it's producing no visible effect, then there's no reason to ever change it. So that's, I guess, my point. Just don't bother with it. Just keep it the way it is by default. I guess it defaults to all. Okay, now on to use creases. This it is, you know, basically saying whether or not to use this crease that we have defined up here. If I have it toggled off, then moving it back and forth does absolutely nothing. Turn it on and now it is doing something. And obviously if your creases are all the way down to zero, then toggling this on and off has no effect as well. And now for use custom normals. This is a bit of a weird one and I haven't really found a way to use it effectively or for it to do things that I want it to do, but I'm told it's used quite a bit in video game development. And what this does is it, you know, everything that we do has normals on it. All the faces have their own normals. And when Blender is calculating all these subdivision, each of those faces has their own normals as well. And those are kind of just interpolated from the normals of the faces that they're being created from. But you can actually create your own custom normals for the original geometry in here. So the way we do that is we select whatever faces, then we come over to mesh, normals and split. And what this does is absolutely nothing, at least as far as we can tell it right now. But if we toggle on use custom normals, you can see how it is, well, a little bit weird. Again, I'm not exactly sure why it has this behavior or how you actually create custom normals here. And if you can change the direction these little lines are pointing, I don't know. But when you actually do the custom normals thing on here and you have it like this, let's actually just create another cube and move it along the X axis. We will apply a subdivision surface modifier here as well. You know, as you look at it, the big difference here is that it's kind of looks like it's treating each of these groups of faces that correspond to the original faces. 
it's treating each of them as having a single face, a single normal that applies to all of them. So it gives you, I mean, it does give you kind of an interesting look, you know, it's a round object that looks flat. It's kind of shaded flat, sort of, if you know how to use custom normals properly and get convincing results that you want to get out of that. Maybe you're a game dev. I don't know. Uh, anyways, if you know that, feel free to let me know down in the comments, but otherwise let's move on to the final thing right here, which is shortcuts because everyone always wants to know shortcuts because they make everything better and faster and easier to use. So let's actually just delete this cube because it looks ugly now. And I don't know how to reverse the, the normals thing like that. Um, obviously toggling it on and off works. Anyways, onto the shortcuts. And the important thing to know here is that there are multiple shortcuts. So if we just press control one on your number bar at the top of your keyboard, it creates a subdivision surface modifier with a levels of one. And if we control two, it switches that to a level two, three, four, five, and six doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't work, but that's how you can create different levels of subdivision surface modifier. And the important thing here is that the render setting does not change. It's always only going to affect what you see in the viewport. So if you want a higher render resolution, you're actually always going to have to change that manually. And as I'm sure you've noticed, every time I do it, it just overrides the previous one that I've done on here, which is a really handy thing because otherwise you might create multiple modifiers here and then completely crash Blender because you're dividing it like a billion times. And one final note, if you have a modifier stack here of multiple different modifiers, say if we just add in a displace modifier like that, then as I still do my control number bar up here, it's still only affecting this top subdivision surface modifier rather than, you know, say creating another one on the bottom of our modifier stack like that. And if you do have multiple subsurf modifiers like this, if you change it like this, it's only ever going to affect the top one like so. And if we delete that, bring this one down, you know, it will continue to change it right here like that. You know, you'll just pick this up by experience and figuring out how it works and the behavior of it and what works where and when. Anyways, one more thing, one final thing, this on cage setting right here. And this is just affecting what it looks like when you're in edit mode. So if we click over to edit mode, you can see that our mesh, you can still see the original cube like that. But if we toggle this on, it's actually taking this original mesh and kind of shrink wrap, basically it's shrink wrapping it to our subdivision surface modifier and what that is actually doing. So if we just toggle on between and that, that's, that's how it works. You know, really simple stuff. Anyways, that's all I've got for this video. It's probably going to end up being a really short one. There's not a whole lot to go over, but this is definitely a really helpful modifier right here. I use it like all the time. So if you enjoyed this video and I hope you did, feel free to support me on patreon.com slash ltfilm. I would really appreciate it and it would help me continue to bring you these high quality videos. Anyways, that's all I've got for now. So I will see you on the next video. I'm John Martinez and this has been Learn Together Filmmaking.